Good day, citizens. It is I, Dr Sinister. Well, it's a sad day. This morning I awoke to the horrible news that my good friend, Mr Kim Jong-il, had passed away. To say I was upset would be a gross understatement. Only a week ago I posted my Christmas speech during which I bemoaned what a sad year it had been for dictators around the globe. Little was I to know that another of our number would be gone all too soon. 2011 has indeed been an annus horribilis for evil everywhere. I used to regularly stay with Kim Jong-il and his family and he was a regular visitor to here to my island base. And I wish to quash once and for all any heinous vicious rumours that I had him assassinated as part of a Machiavellian scheme to seize power in North Korea for myself. Kim, or Kimmy, as I used to know him, was a lovely man. Despite being born with a woman's name, he nevertheless had a good sense of humour about his nomenclature. And during his days at school, I often heard stories that he would join in with the childhood haunts of Kim, Kim, why are you so dim? While secretly noting down the names of his tormentors in his little red book. He was a self-effacing man, humble, never one to boast of his achievements, and a dedicated film buff. Sure, he had a temper, and he could lash out at times, killing anyone who annoyed him, and several people who happened to be just nearby. But, let's face it, who hasn't done that in their time? I know I have. His plans were often grandiose and impractical, but wow, did he have style. As a person of restricted eyesight, I used to envy his fashionable choices of eyewear. Those glasses kicked ass, Kimmy, and you knew it. His nuclear programme, whilst underfunded, was masterfully executed, even under the watchful eye of the United Nations. Of course, Kimmy didn't have my good fortune. I was able to make use of massive loopholes in European legislation in order to get the cash to buy my island base and my invincible fleet of nuclear submarines. But Kimmy, no, he had to do it all alone. Plus, of course, he had the utter misfortune of inheriting a country that appeared on a map. Whereas, of course, no one has the slightest idea where I'm recording this. And as far as I'm concerned, that's just so much the better. Kimmy also had masterful social schemes, ensuring utter devotion from his people and making sure they were never overfed. They always turned to him for the next meal, ensuring he had the power and they never were allowed to become strong enough to overthrow his regime. You see, that's real thinking and something I'll have to try one day. Alas, it seems that his investment, or lack of it, in infrastructure was his downfall. The stories at the moment suggest that he died of fatigue after a train journey. I mean, come on, Kimmy, what a way to go. Did no one tell you that trains really ought to run under their own power? You shouldn't have to push them. <sighs> the only other area that Kimmy was lacking in was his choice of abode. Um, in all my travels around North Korea, as an esteemed guest, I never once saw a single golden palace. I mean, come on, Kimmy, you should have got with the program. Saddam and I were building golden palaces years ago. Why not you? I often used to wonder if your heart was really in it. And then you went and shelled that island and sank that South Korean ship. And I realized <laughs> that was the Kimmy of old. Good on you. So farewell, Kimmy. You've gone before your time, mate. It's a sad day for evil and oppression. And I can only hope that your replacement has got the stomach and the balls to continue in your tradition. Are we off? Yeah. Um, can you call General Pak Rim Su? Um, tell him thanks very much for the invite to the funeral. Um, We'll catch up afterwards um, and we'll discuss Project Sleeper Car in more detail. Brilliant. Thanks then.